Okay, so basic marinara sauce, yeah? Um, again, yeah, you can use spinach um, in those dishes. But well, the main core ingredients are going to be garlic, um, tomato. So I've got some fresh tomatoes here, okay? Um, I've got some tin tomatoes. I've got some salt and pepper. I'm going to start off with my garlic and my onions, yes? Okay, so basically, I'm sure you've all seen these before, it's a bulb of fresh garlic. Just lean on it, and it should just come apart, fall apart. Can you see? Yeah, that looks great. great. Sorry? You know what I've done before? I, um, I soak them in hot water, and it makes it easier to peel. Take the skins off, yeah. I mean, you yeah. can blanch them in hot water, um, squash them. Okay, so you get your garlic, you can either use your hand, or you can use the back of a knife. And if you use the back of the side of the knife, you see this, this, the garlic just drops out. Do that once more. Can you all see that? Yeah. With the garlic, with the hands, or with the side of the knife, pick it up and the skin drops off. Right, somebody's raising their hand. Yeah. That means they, they, they're liking it. Keep your board clear of extra traffic at all times, so you can see what you're doing. You can't see what you're doing, potentially there's gonna be a safety risk, yes? You can't see what you're cutting. Could be your fingers. <laughs> one more piece. Right, so I've, I've just had a question from one of the, um, the attendees, asked me if there's gonna be any art classes as part of This Is My City. Um, yes. There is, and I'm going to be launching one soon, which is going to be a logo competition. So for our Pillars project, which is the Heritage project, we don't have a logo. I think you've all seen the wonderful logo that we've got for Dishes. So I will be lo launching the logo competition soon. Okay. Right, so we're just going to chop up the garlic up into small pieces. Just remember, yeah, keep your fingers out of the way. So what I'm using here is a claw grip. And I'm just keeping my knife steady and rocking it over the ingredients whilst moving my guiding hand out of the way. So all I have on the board is what I want to chop. I wish I could chop like that. See where my hand is, yeah? Not wrapped around the side on the top so I can see where all of my fingers are. You've taken anything off the knife, run your finger away from the sharp edge, yeah? Health and safety all the time. Sorry? Health and safety all the time. Good, good, good. That's why the last time I saw you, you had all of your fingers present. Yeah, I still got them, yes. Okay, that's good news. Okay. That's my garlic done. So I'm going to put that into a little dish for on, later on, slide that in there. Okay, so that's your prepared garlic, yes? Onion. So that's a rather large onion. Is there, is there any type of onion that that is? No, you think this one's large. What about his big brother? I'll wow. <laughs> So these are called Spanish onions, okay? So a Spanish onion, the flavour is a little bit more delicate. Um, it's not as intense as a cooking onion. Um, you can also use it in salads. So what we're going to do is remove the outside all the time. This is my rubbish box, keeping your board tidy. 
peel off the outside of the onion. This is the second layer now. It still has some brown to it, which is the skin. One of the things that sometimes people find difficult with onions is um, how they make you cry. So this is because the onion is still alive. And in the wild, it's its natural mechanism for stopping predators from eating it. So as you run your knife into it or you bite into it, it will spray. Yeah, that spray is supposed to put you off eating it. So that's an onion survival mechanism. Okay, the back of the onion here is the brain of the onion, the roots of the onion, okay? So you see I've left the roots intact, I've just trimmed it, so shh, I don't want it to know that I'm gonna eat it, okay? <laughs> so I'm just gonna run my knife through this quickly before it wakes up. Discard that bit. Okay, so that's some, um, some onions. I'm going to place these down here. Leave that bowl. Okay, so the basic recipe um, here is just chopped tomatoes. But if you have any fresh tomatoes in your fridge, please feel comfortable that you can use them. These are cherry vine plums tomatoes, okay? Yeah, these are alive as well, it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to be eaten. <laughs> Do they? Okay, so. If I take that. Okay, so we could go about cutting these one at a time like this. Yeah, which is good enough, you know. At some point, you might get to a point where you feel comfortable running your knife through your tomatoes and then now they're all cut. Yeah, do that once more. Tomatoes on the board, put your hand on it gently. And they're all cut. Wow. Okay, the last few off here. I love vine tomatoes. And if you leave them under vine until you use them, they'll stay a bit fresher, you know? Okay, so over here is my induction stove, which I'm using just to make it a little bit easier for you guys to see today. So I put that on um, 10, it goes up to a maximum of 12. So that's quite going to heat up quite quickly, yeah? And for today, I'm going to be using some coconut oil. Um, invariably, I would use olive oil. Um, you can use ordinary vegetable oil or some flour oil, um, but coconut oil is probably the healthiest one of the choices. Yeah? So I've got that in my pan. You see what's going on there yet? Yeah. yeah. It's great. So I've got a question. Now, 
Chef Lorenzo, I've got a question. Somebody's asked, um, it's Italian food, so you're not using olive oil? Invariably, yes. I would normally use olive oil. Um, but, um, yeah, Vanessa's been on at me, you know, about trying to use coconut oil more um, and using some of the recipes. So that's what I'm going to try and do today. So we're always trying to make recipes a lot more healthier, aren't we? So th this is a healthy eating course. That's, that's what it's about, yeah. So it's about using the alternatives. Without compromising the integrity of the dish. Uh, so I feel quite comfortable that we won't lose too much from, from the dish by using this as a supplement. Okay, so that's hot. I've got my Spanish onions here. Okay, can you hear the sizzle? Yeah. Okay, that's a good indication that you're frying medium, be it olive oil or coconut oil, is at the right temperature to add your ingredients, yes? If you add ingredients to cold oil, you're going to end up with something oily and greasy as an end product, which is not what we're looking for. Okay, so the onions are beginning to start in the pan. Okay. Did you see that, Dawn? Yep, I saw it. Okay. And then I'm going to then add some garlic to the situation. Yeah. The recipes are available online. Yeah. So hopefully, have you all logged into the online portal? Have you seen the uh, the recipe in the in the Italian course? Please say yes, no, so we know that you're you you've accessed it. You can see it. Again, this is an additional ingredient just to show um, that if you've got the ingredients in your crisper and you want to use them, you can do. Yeah, so the basic marinara sauce is really onions, garlic, tomato, and a few herbs. Yeah. Okay, so lots of people said they haven't accessed it yet. If you do have any issues with access, just contact us and we'll sort it out. We're always there to sort out and troubleshoot any problems that you're having. And I'm quite willing to link up with you on a Zoom like this so we can go through it, go through all the pages. Okay, so that's frying down nicely there. So, Chef, I've got two questions. Uh, the first question is, how much coconut oil do you use? Okay, I used about an ounce, a fluid ounce. So, fluid ounce. They've got measuring spoons and measuring cups. So, how, would that be a tablespoon? Or? Okay, so I would say about, about um, a dessert, yeah, a tablespoon or two dessert spoons. Depends on what the amount you're cooking. The amount I'm cooking today, I'm just saying it was two dessert spoons. And I've got another question. Okay. I've got so, another question, Chef. Sorry. Um, yes, Chef. Do you put the onion in the same bowl as the garlic? When it's in the pan together, but I didn't, I didn't store them together when I was doing my preparation. So I had one bowl with one bowl. All my ingredients were in separate bowls. Yeah. Well, yes, in the pan is your oil, then your onions and your garlic. Yeah. Yeah. We've got it. Now, so you can cut these things any shape you want. I'm just doing a medium sized dice. You can't smell it, but I can. It's coming together. A little bit I'm of feeling hungry already. <laughs> I wish I was there. A mere suggestion of salt. Uh huh. I'm going to put a couple of bay leaves in there now.
I mean, I usually use bay leaves when I'm doing like, like Asian recipes. So I didn't know that you could use them in um, Italian as well. Yeah, I mean, they're used in, in many different continents across, across the world. Um, they're quite versatile and they bring a lot to the table as regards to the flavour. And aroma. You know, I love bay leaves, I do. I love them. Okay, so it's a lovely little look, see how we're getting on. So in there... Hold it up a bit, yeah, that's brilliant. Wow, look at the colour there. Okay. Gorgeous. So just to recap, in there, we've got your oil, onions, garlic, peppers, bay leaf, salt and pepper. Okay. So we've got your chopped tomatoes and your fresh tomatoes left now, yeah? I'm going to get these in there. Some, but not all. Okay, now, I really do like to use fresh herbs where possible. Now this is thyme, okay? I love thyme. So thyme, oregano lends itself obviously to Italian cookery. A nice fresh oregano would be nice. But in the absence of that, I'm just going to use a little bit of fresh thyme. It tends to last a little bit longer around you than other fresh herbs. Like rosemary lasts quite long as well. Quite robust. But if you look at that there now, you see those? Yeah, that's great. And the tomatoes. Wow. Now, okay, so some of you may have received um, these packs. So in here, you have got some fresh oregano, you've got some basil, thyme, black pepper, which I've used, um, coconut oil, which I've used, and if you hadn't got any fresh garlic, the garlic powder would do as a supplement. I'm going to use a little bit of this oregano, yeah, in here. Oh, so is that one of the seasonings that came in the pack? That would be the seasonings that Pack, yeah. So everybody should have that once they've got received their packs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to add a tin tomato. Oh, that's looking lovely. Okay. Well, it's not one now. Okay, you see, see the board is still tidy. So, Chef, you're using a brown board there. Why, why is it a brown one? Okay, so you'll brown all of the boards if you have different colours. You use the different things, and then you, can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So you at the top. You have the red for the raw meats, blue for raw fish, yellow for cooked meat, green for salad and fruits, and brown for vegetables. White for dairy. So that's the kind of industry standard of the colours used. Yeah in a commercial kitchen to prevent or reduce the possibilities of cross-contamination. Okay. So if you look at your sauce here now, can you see that? 
Oh yeah, it's nice and thick now. It's thickening up. Okay, so it's thickening up nicely, yeah. So I'm going to let that tick over. I'm going to turn that down to, to seven. Let that tick over. At this point now, I'm going to I'll start to think about um, how I'm going to finish my pasta, my sauce off. Now, I've always wanted to do this. So this is the pasta here, okay? This is actually a gluten-free pasta, yeah? You can use regular pasta. Um, so we'll just put this to one side. And here's some I prepared earlier. Oh. <laughs> you, sound, you sound like Chef Ramsay now, don't you? <laughs> and here's, here's what I did earlier. <laughs> so this is, um, if, you, if you reflect on the earlier quiz here, yeah, this is the Fusilli pasta. Okay, so two things I'm going to look at now. We've made sure we've got our pasta cooked. Um, I'm going to start thinking about how am I going to finish it off, what I'm going to put, put the dish on when it's done, yes? So I've got a question, Chef. Uh -huh. so the question is about chopping boards. So it says, what is the minimum chopping board to have at home? Because she has no place for all those colourful boards. Okay. And, and I wash every time after using... Okay, what I would, if, yeah, if, if you've only got the same board, I would start off with preparing your non-meat products, yeah? So all of your salads, your vegetables, any herbs, get all that prepared first, then use the board last for your meat, and then you can wash it, yeah? Failing that, if you have two boards, then if you use one for your raw stuff, and then one for everything else, would be, you know, the next best thing. Brilliant. I've got another question. So the uh, question is, how long do you cook the sauce for? The sauce? Yeah. Okay, so this is, I was literally leaving that for six or seven minutes. After I've added everything, six or seven minutes now, just to let it all soften down and blend together and allow those herbs and the garlic to really infuse into the sauce, yeah? So to be fair, from start to finish, this sauce will probably take you... 12, 14 minutes if you had all your prep done. Which is a nice, which is, which is nice, which is nice to know um, if, if you're in a hurry or you're coming from work and you haven't got a lot of time. It's also a sauce that you can make up and put in your fridge um, or, or freeze down into portions so you can put it out as and when you need it. So at this point, yeah, I mean, things like um, cooked prawns, you can put into that sauce moments away from now, stir it up, leave that for a couple of minutes to heat through, and then it'd be a prawn version of the marinara sauce. If it was chicken, I'd suggest you'd cut it, in, cut it into strips and maybe fry that up in a different pan and then marry the two things together. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, I like to pre-make some meatballs and then, you know, put those in as, you know, so it's just minced meat with some onions and a little bit of um, bread. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, that's where you, 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 has anybody ever heard of the uh, meatball marinara? Yeah? Yeah. So there's, a, there's a company out there that's uh, popular for making sandwiches that do such a sandwich. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I can't name any names because I don't know. That's it. No. <laughs> no promotions here. We're not getting paid for it. <laughs> okay. Now, what a lot of people forget to do, or don't see as important, is what I'm about to do now. Okay. I don't see how you can cook something and never taste it. So you're just adding some salt and pepper there, yeah? A little salt and pepper, I'm now going to add a little tomato paste. That's one okay. dessert spoon. That a table spoon. Dessert spoon. Yeah? Yeah. 
that's looking great. Look at that. Yeah, that's great. Right, so what I'm doing now is I'm taking out any extra sauce that I don't think I'm going to need for this, presenting this dish. Put that to one side. I'll take some pasta. Okay, so this is spinach. Wow, lovely. Okay, just washed out of the bag and just washed, yeah? See, I put that in the pan. Yeah. Okay. So watch what happens to that in moments. As soon as it sees the heat, That'll start to wilt down. You hear the pan? Yeah, I can hear it. See, this is when you remember and you realise I didn't actually have any breakfast. And now I know. driving me insane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starving, I am. So, um, to all the attendees, is anybody going to be trying this this weekend? Just put some comments in the chat section. Oh yeah, we've got a few yeses. I mean, it seems quite easy to do as well. Oh, so you're doing it today, Leela. Oh, somebody's doing it along with you, uh, Chef. Again? Yeah. Oh, okay, we've got, we've got somebody doing it as we speak. I like yeah. that, I like it a lot. <laughs> I like that. Don't forget, for those who are cooking it, to you remember to upload your pictures or you know um, evidence that you've actually done it. So make sure you take a photograph at the end. If you can video it, video it or anything. And we want some feedback as well on the course. We will accept TikTok videos as well, won't we, Dora? Well, will it, did you hear that? Will it accept TikTok videos as well? If, if anybody does TikTok? Instagram lives and all sorts of different things will accept anything as, as evidence. Okay. Without further ado, I give you pasta marinara with red peppers finished with fresh spinach and fresh parmesan. It's actually a um, this is just a, a grated parmesan where you can use dried or you can use flakes. It's, it's shaved. Yeah, but there you go. So that's your dish. That Little, looks absolutely uh, lovely. And the spinach, I folded it in last minute and I've not left it in the pan for long. So you've still got a, a lot of vibrant colour there um, and some flavours and textures. Yeah, thank you. Well done, Chef. That's beautiful. Well done. Does anybody want to ask any questions? I've got one question in the Q&A. So Chef, somebody's asked, what is the difference on the tomatoes chopped in the tin to a passata and how you, and, and you, how using it to, to which best recipe is better? Okay, I'm just turning the fans off so I can hear that. So what I thought I heard was, what's the difference between chopped tomatoes and passata? Yeah, that's the first one. Sieved tomato products, yeah? So it's smooth, yeah? 
the chopped tomatoes is giving you a bit of texture. And if you look at the dish, we've added fresh tomatoes to again and peppers to bring um, some texture to the table. So I quite like using the chopped tomatoes and I wouldn't use a um, starter for, for this dish particularly. What you can do if you wanted a smooth product that was already having um, different textures in, if you were going to use prawns or chicken um, and you knew, and there was peppers and onions and mushrooms and different things in there, then you'd probably compromise um, and use a passata as a sieved product, knowing that your textures are coming from somewhere else. Right, hopefully that answers the question. Uh, the other question is, what tips do you have to add soya to this recipe? Say again. What tips do you have to add soya to this recipe? Okay, so the, the, the dish as it is, that's fine. Your soya, um, you can then cut, if you're using, there's lots of different soya products, so probably a diced soya product, um, like the, 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 the like the corn, yeah? So the, you can either have them in little breasts, which I'd probably cut into strips if I was using those, or a diced um, soya product. In the pan, a little bit of oil, yeah? Toss it, yeah? Give it a little bit of colour and then fold it into all your other ingredients would be the, the way to use your soya. If you're going to do chicken, um, again, use a different pan. Put this to one side once you've made your sauce. Before you're adding your pasta, put your chicken up, stir it through the pan, make sure that's hot and it's the flavour that you want and the colour that you want, then add it to your sauce, the marinara sauce that we made earlier, and you fold your pasta and your spinach in at the last minute. Brilliant. I've got another question. Um, they've, they've asked, are we allowed to show the coconut oil? I want to buy one, thanks. Okay, is that right? Oh, sorry. <laughs> there you go. Lovely. Um, what we'll do is I'll, I'll put that also in the group. So we've got, there is a Facebook group. So please, if you could find, this is my city um, Facebook page. So it's called, this is my city. And then if you like the page, I can add you into the dishes um, of the cupboard Facebook group. Uh, I tend to post things like that in the, in the group. It's a private group, so nobody else can see it. I've got another question. It says, can you add halloumi cheese? Yes, yeah. Um, if I was adding halloumi to this, what I probably would do is I would char grill it. So I would use a pan with grill marks on it. Yeah. With ridges. Okay, so I would use something like this with grill, grill lines on it. Yeah. I'd get it hot. Okay, so we have one here. Yeah. I'd get it hot, then I'd add my halloumi to that. What, and cook it on both sides, and then I would place the halloumi on the top. So what you'd have there is you'd have the, the, the white going golden brown of the halloumi with some nice dark lines going through it, and sit that on top of the pasta, yeah? You probably could garnish that then with a little balsamic glaze, yeah? Which you kind of, again, bring some more colors and a little bit more flavor to the situation. Balsamic glaze, do you know what that is, guys? No, tell us. I don't, I don't know what that is. Okay, if you can't find this product, yeah, all you do is, is you're using some balsamic vinegar, putting it on the stove and reducing it, yeah, until it thickens, okay? I'm going to open this now and show you what this does to the dish. Okay, can you see the pasta? Yeah. Okay. So there's a little bit of a chefy thing here going on. Is it going yeah, I can see. Ooh. Can you see that? Oh, wow. That looks like restaurant style now. That looks fab. 
That's absolutely fab. Okay. That's to die for. Okay. Any further? Th there's no more questions. Does anybody else have any questions they want to ask? What I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to unmute everybody. So if you want to use your microphone and say thank you to Chef Lorenzo today, feel free to um, open up your mic and say thank you. I've got some thank yous in the comments. Everybody's been shy today. So you should all be able to talk. You're all unmuted, so you can unmute your microphone. Uh, you can see, I don't know if you can see, Chef, everybody's um, appearing at the top now. Can you see um, the, the people appearing? Hi. <laughs> oh, he just, said, he just said you, you weren't watching this. I can't see you. I can't see you, can hear you. No, I mean, obviously they've all got their videos on, but you, they're, they're kind of like all on the screen now, so you, can, you should be able to see them. Thank oh, you, like... Cher. Hi. I can't, I can't see you. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, you can, you can oh, see there's lots of the speech I think, I, think, I think Nessie's trying to work it out for me. I don't think you're strong enough to do that, though. Okay, okay. Hi, Did you all enjoy that? Just say yes or no. Yes. Yes. Hi. Yes. Hi. Yes. 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 Hi. Yes. 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 Good, good. Excellent. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. So tune in next week, next Friday again, and Chef Lorenzo will be doing another menu um, next week. So make sure you're on time. And make sure you're ready. So we're going to say bye to Chef Lorenzo now. Bye. 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 Something left to say. See you later. Yeah. Get cooking. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.